The world of Dwight D. Eisenhower seems distant these days, and for millions he is nothing but a name. Yet the things that he achieved still matter. Ike was a president who strove with great success to heal a stricken nation, to make decision-making more rational, to curb the influence of a demagogue, to make a huge investment in infrastructure without causing economic dislocations, and to counteract Russian aggression without bringing nuclear war. Do these themes sound familiar? There is much we can learn about the world that Ike made and the complicated man who made it. We can profit from the study of Ike and his times, so different from ours, but so alike. This book provides a new commentary on Eisenhower. It is the story of a life that was coherent but also mysterious. Ike left a record of consistencies mixed with contradictions, but his achievements look better and better over time. This is a story of a man who drove himself relentlessly while doing his best to seem relaxed, a man who kept some of his greatest accomplishments secret and who paid the price of being undervalued. It is a story of burning ambition and excruciating sacrifice. Decades ago, the political scientist Fred Greenstein argued convincingly that Eisenhower solved a central problem of the presidency. He was able to combine the functions that in other societies are split between a symbolic head of state who is largely a figurehead, whether a constitutional monarch or a president whose function is to float above politics, and the dealmaker who wields the levers of power, the prime minister. Ike was able to combine these roles for two reasons. First, he was a military hero who projected a sunny and relaxed personality. That made him enormously popular. Second, he protected his popularity by engaging in machinations behind the scenes, by using hidden hand techniques. These techniques were often very crafty. He was brilliant at concocting deceptions to create maneuvering room for himself. There were times when he would even try to seem befuddled, out of touch. He paid a price for this when detractors said that he was old and past his prime. But in a strange sort of way, he got a kick from the deception since his mind was razor sharp. When Press Secretary James Haggerty warned him that a delicate issue might be raised at an upcoming press conference, I quipped, don't worry, Jim, I'll just confuse them. Here was a quintessential foxy grandpa. Louis Columbus, who edited the Eisenhower papers, called him Machiavellian. This presidential achievement was, in some respects, unique to his times and to the man. The closest thing we have seen in recent years to a military hero who was interested in presidential politics was Colin Powell, who considered a run for the Republican presidential nomination in 2000, but decided against it.